I recently saw that Battlefield 4, as well as the entire Battlefield catalog, was on sale on Steam. The price, $4.79, about the price of a Happy Meal, and I hadn't played BF4 in probably close to seven years. I tried playing it on my PS5 a while back, but due to the game's original 1080p format on consoles, it looked, in a word, terrible. Especially on a 65-inch screen, it was really bad. It, it just didn't look right, and it was really pretty much impossible to play. I chalked it up to, you know, nice try, but no dice. No, no pun intended. Fast forward to about three days ago when I decided to give it another go via Steam. I hadn't yet played it on PC, and I remember, uh, you know, how blown away I was with BF3's lasting quality graphically, you know, and it, it was hard to, to remember that at times. And I was reviewing a game called uh, BF3 Reality Project at the time, and when I came back to BF4, I wondered if it would look every bit as good as BF3 did. And while I waited for my download to complete, I finally did get into a server. Um, so, you know, something else to note here is that at the, make, at the time of making this video, BF4 has about 3,000 players on Steam charts, which is kind of a lot, actually, if you consider the age of this game. But to put it to a, a shorter point, yes, the game looks great still. So when I finally got into that first match, I noticed a couple things right off the bat. And one, obviously, like I said, the game looks pretty damn good, given the age of it as well. You know, you, you can almost certainly run this on ultra or ultra high settings if you're on PC with no problem at all and get over 100 FPS on a 4K monitor, which is what I'm running. So that's something that's really cool. And if you're interested in picking it up or you might think about doing it after watching this, it's something to have in the back of your mind. Number two. It's a hell of a lot harder than I remember it being, and there's a significant difficulty increase in gun control between BF4 and BF1, which only continued to get slightly easier as we rolled into BF5 and 2042. Recoil control is everything, and in BF4 it didn't matter if you could hold the gun steady enough for it to not run away from you. If you wanted to fire in full auto for extended periods of time, you were just going to miss shots, plain and simple. Which also makes a lot of sense because being able to control a gun's vertical recoil is great, but ultimately that doesn't overly help you uh, deal with the adverse effects of how the gun responds horizontally in those kind of situations. Now, even DMRs, you needed to handle with controlled, concise shots, and it was frustratingly refreshing. Number three, the class system was Battlefield in many ways. Yes, other games have class systems, but no one, in my opinion, stamped it as their own as well as Battlefield did. And with those classes came squads that actually seemed to regularly move together as a group through a map. Sure, you still occasionally lose your way, but it had been a long time since I took a peek at my little mini-map down there and saw four green triangles all moving around together at the same time. Nobody taught, nobody, we weren't communicating physically over VoIP or anything either. We were just moving together. Number four. Tanks in particular were just better. So many little things make this true, but one that stands out is the little icon that denotes Gunner from main tank cannon. Even if you couldn't directly communicate with the person riding with you, you'd know whether or not they were covering your ass because you could watch their turret seat move. And as a tank driver, if you were lucky, you'd get someone that knew to be watching the back half of the rig. And if, you know, and if they were, you'd know because you could see that thing moving around. I thought it was an amazing little little detail they had in previous titles that they lost, you know, going forward, especially with 2042. Number five, leaning, leaning, leaning. Somehow I'd forgotten this mechanic was implemented in BF4, but there it is. Battlefield was and never will be a hardcore tactical shooter, but adding this element made the engagements you'd have more real because engagements were what you'd have. It was groups of people running into each other more often than not, so one versus one tactics were borderline useless. Being able to lean out from behind cover and either return fire or simply spot enemies for your team is invaluable. Somehow the value of this both applicably and aesthetically were lost on dice when they made 2042, unfortunately, because it's not there and I don't know that it's going to be put back in. I really would love for it to. Speaking of 2042, as a fan of the Battlefield franchise for the better part of the last 15 years, 2042 marked the first time that I think not only fans but outsiders looking in could see the potential for Battlefield to overtake Call of Duty, something that would have been a first in its lengthy history. The hype was absolutely incredible, and whether that be bad or good, it was most definitely real, and it was really hard to stay totally level-headed about it, particularly if you were already a fan of Battlefield. The ensuing launch delay was initially looked at by many as being something that showed the developers at DICE were willing to put things on hold in order to get things right, and I, you know, sheepishly was one of those people 
Rather than release a sketch of a cock on a cocktail napkin and say it was a finished work of art, they're doing it the right way. You know, we told ourselves that. After all, not long before Cyberpunk 2077 released on PC and consoles, and to the dismay of console owners, they got that aforementioned cocktail napkin masquerading as a finished product. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Not only was that a huge blunder by CD Projekt Red from a financial perspective, but it was clear that fans of the studio were not willing to give developers a pass on something so egregiously incomplete. So when Battlefield 2042 released in the state that we saw it, it was a slap in the face to a lot of people. With all that being said, DICE has managed to at least right the ship's direction, and I, I can't say confidently that it's been guided to safe waters yet, but the last two months have been hopeful. The latest update included more new weapons and the map Spearhead that probably feels the most like Battlefield um, since 2042's release. And Stranded was a good offering as well, but left a little bit to be desired from the exterior battlefront aspects. Stranded was is a great in the indoor area in the shipping containers inside the ship is a lot of fun the outdoor areas leave a little bit to be desired and there's some good places but ultimately it still feels a little bit like it's just there spearhead offers tons of outdoor living but with one major difference to the base maps that came at launch natural cover and lanes to navigate the terrain without being completely exposed there's been reworks of old maps coming out to fix barren unfinished looking offerings and that will continue alongside new content these are all good things Unfortunately, I don't think DICE should expect much more than its built-in base to be willing to buy into this title due to all the shortcomings that came at launch and for the majority of the last year, the first year. And you can't blame people for that either. It's, you know, there's plenty of unwarranted hate and toxic speech that gets thrown around at devs across the gaming industry. But as far as feeling like 2042 has been unsatisfactory from a buyer's point of view, that's totally fair. I'm going to keep playing Battlefield because I'm a quote unquote vet as a lot of that community likes to say. I've been playing this game for so long and I'm entrenched into it and I'm willing to take some punches along the way. I'm also more than willing to give a fair assessment of how the health of the franchise or a particular title are and I think that's how we should all view games that we love, especially games that we love. At the end of the day, someone is still asking us to pay $70 or more for a product and our sentiment shouldn't get in the way of expecting that product to be both finished and what was promised. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you're all having a great week, and I thank you again for stopping by. Please drop me a comment in the section below. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about the health of Battlefield and how you feel about it going forward. I uh, look forward to reading your comments and getting back to you. Cheers, everybody.